This is the Extra Point Podcast from Arizona's family. Well, it's been the story that has dominated Arizona sports this week after, well, we needed something to really stew on after the Suns' playoff loss, so we found a story that looked even more depressing for a moment, but uh, maybe some hope today. We bring in our good friend Dennis Welsh here on the Extra Point Podcast, our political editor, talking sports making huge sports news today what am i doing here talking about sport ball well you know i'm I was a thinking, politics guy i was thinking i could come on your 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 political podcast i have some opinions yes so maybe we could yes, uh, we'll, cross promote here all right we'll swap out here we'll swap out <laughs> but man you made some big news today uh, you know arizona sports is taking your tweet and running with it so the arizona coyotes we thought i thought they were gone mm-hmm. i thought they were gone after tempe said no to their new arena you got some news we can use today that maybe, just maybe, there might be another spot for them. Yeah, you know, and I was, like, a little surprised that it took off so much because the Coyotes, from what I understand, like, you know, yesterday was saying they've engaged local partners, so they were making it clear that they'd been, you know, sniffing around other areas. Um, but I got a source over at City of Mesa was speaking with them, and, and just kind of threw it out there. It's like, what, what, what you heard from the, the Coyotes? I said, well, they, they reached out, you know, yesterday, a day after, uh, Tempe defeated, you know, the, the arena deal at the polls and said that, you know, they reached out. Now, you know, what I've been reporting tonight is like, yes, that happened. There's a big warning, big caution here that comes with that is you are a long ways away from ever, from getting to that point because a lot has to happen in Mesa before you can get there. And from what I understand, the town, the, the team looking at other areas as well around the valley. And there's still the potential they could leave the state. Well, and they have been a long ways away since since I moved here in 06. There's just been one thing, one guy after another coming in to save the day. There's a new plan, and it just seems to sputter. And so I I, I am gun shy. I take a lot of pride that we are a town that has the, the, yeah. the four big ones here and, and professional men's and women's basketball and professional men's and now women's soccer and a golf tournament and the Super Bowl and the Final Four and uh, all the colleges, and I could go on and on mm-hmm. and on. Um, but uh, as far as just the, the potential in Mesa, so what's that look like politically? Will it be a similar situation where you, you this has to go to a vote and there's going to be another it, you know rally support for it? Again, a long way to go and depends on how the deal would would pencil out. But they, the, the 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 Mesa voters, you know, you got to go all the way back. Remember the stadium deal with the Cardinals and all how that all worked out. Well, after that, City of Mesa decided to put in their charter was voted into their charter that apparently every every like sport facility stadium out there that would cost or a million and a half dollars would have to be signed off on by the voters. So if it ever got to that point, it would look like that the Coyotes, again, would have to face the voters on any particular deal in there, depending on how this deal um, works its way out. Now, the thing about the Mesa voter is they're an older electorate right now. They're a very conservative electorate right now that makes it tough, but it doesn't make it impossible because, you know, Mesa, the Mesa voter out there is real tough and real tight with their tax money, but you give them a reason they're going to shell it out. Back in 2010, remember, the voters in Mesa went out and voted for money to f- help fund and approve um, the spring training facility for the Chicago Cubs. The thing about the Cubs, so you got to remember, that's part of the, the town's identity. They're A, they're a driver of spring training. And in Mesa, it, they're just part of the fabric of that town. I mean, you know, Harry, you know, Harry Carey had a bar out there for years. So there was a connection there. If it ever got to a situation where it was a vote, again, a long way off, if it got there, do, do the Coyotes have that kind of connection with the town right there where if, you know, the, you know, voters out there felt like they wanted to give approval to this, if it was going to cost any kind of extra money uh, to support a facility like this and infrastructure upgrades or anything like that, we'd have to see how the deal pencils out. Would that voter be, like, cool with that? That's a big question. Yeah, that's and a big I, question. Well, and I and I, I also wonder, it, it, you know, the Coyotes were, were going to put up two point one billion dollars and have the whole entertainment yep. district, and, and and the in the real estate and everything in Tempe, if they were to just buy the land, would there still need to be a vote? Do you have any type of sense on if there might be a way that they just buy this thing outright? They they could. I mean, again, you still have to see how this all plays out. If they were to buy that land, you go back to the charter and see how that all works out. My understanding is is like any big stadium deal. Um, the voters would have to kind of kind of do that. You know, y- you know, that's my understanding from the people in the know over at City Hall over there. And again, you know, who's who owns that mall right now? Like, how would that pl- 
play out, you know, we've got to wait and see. Because again, my understanding, coyotes are looking all sorts of. There's you know, rel- there's the, rel- the the tribes around here. Yep, yep. They could partner with them. Um, it might be a lot easier and a lot quicker to do something like that. Or you could see somebody come out of nowhere and make a deal. Um, and again, I you know, my understanding is that, you know, you also got to look at what the NHL wanted to. It seems like the NHL has been doing everything they can for the past 20 years to keep this organization in the Valley, in the state of Arizona. I don't think, you know, if there was a possibility they could still stay here, I think they want to see that play out, right? Right. And I mean, and, and I don't know if anybody else knows this except me. You actually worked on the, on the, on the Footprint Center. You actually worked <laughs> there. That was one. So if you would have just made it bigger and we could have seen the other goal, like, like then, then they could still be playing there and they'd still be in downtown. L- little known fact about me. <laughs> <laughs> when I, when my first job out of high school was a construction job where I was doing fireproof. You know, it was then it was uh, what was it? America West Arena yep, yep, was. Yeah. Uh, I came in at the end of that. You know, if it place ever catches on fire, I'm sure. Trust me, it hasn't. You Look, know, it's you know? been great. Like you made it. Yeah. <laughs> it, is it caught on fire? No, because Dennis did his job. I was, by the way, I was really terrible at construction, so that's why I ended up going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's worked out for you. Um, yeah, I mean, Politics Unplugged, one of our best shows here on Arizona's Family. I always enjoy watching that uh, on the weekends. Uh, as far as just, just put, just let's just talk as a sports fan here. We always talk sports here, mm-hmm. so we always have lots of good conversations. Um, they went to the West Valley. It was just really hard to, to solidify a fan base. Where do you think the Coyotes should go to, to see if they could own the town once again? Because there was a time in downtown – when when this the, the the Coyotes owned downtown and it was the place to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's 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 do this by a process of elimination almost, <laughs> right? We can't go back to Glendale. I mean, I, I don't think that happening. They tried in Scottsdale, that didn't work out. That didn't work out in Tempe. Um, they were in Phoenix. Could they go back to that? There's been some speculation on that. I don't know. Why not try something new with Mesa? You know, I don't have a rooting interest in it. You know, um, uh, but it seems that you know. Redeveloping malls is a big deal. There's a lot of landscape there. It could seem like if, if, if you could get that to work out, it might be a pl- just, you know, details aside, might be a good location for something like this. Because when I grew up, when I was growing up, that part of Mesa was a very thriving part of the East Valley. And since, you know, the, the Fiesta Mall and malls in general have been de- declining and decaying, that whole area is, you know, went south as well. Um, you know, could you get a deal out there with, with that? It seems like it'd be a pretty decent spot. It's not far from the the freeway. It's not far from from the airports, and it is a prime piece of uh, real estate in the East Valley. I mean, if they can make that work, I mean, I, I'm sure Mesa would love to be able to get something that they can make work in that area because they very much want want to redevelop that part. Well, and in downtown Mesa, off the light rail, you, I mean, the first thing I thought is you just shoot the light rail over there, yeah. and you got. You, I mean, that's that. And, I, and it might even go because the community college is over there, right? Yeah, so, it, you got a community yeah. college that's like larger than most most colleges right. across the country. It's like how many how many people are gonna, tens of thousands of people go to school over at Mesa Community College? Right, right. I mean, it's it, yeah. It, it seems it, it seems like it would be a, a a really solid area. Do you get any sense though? I mean, have you called any other sources? You're like, hey, what's going on in your town? What are you guys? What are you guys doing? I haven't gotten yeah. around to any other towns. I mean, Mesa. I mean, initially, from what I'm reading and what you're reporting and everything else, you put it all together. I mean, you know, Mesa was a place that was rumored. Now, I can say this: that you know, a few months ago, I was talking to some other some people in Mesa, and they'd also told me before all the referendum stuff or the the ballot measure got heated in Tempe. There were some soft, you know, reach out and you know, and and talks. Um, from the Coyotes and Mesa about maybe the Fiesta Mall could be one of those spots. And my understanding was, and this is, you know, based on a source, and is that, you know, Mesa's, you know, they're not really prepared to kind of roll out the type of incentives that we saw in Tempe, which I think ultimately kind of helped defeat that 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 proposition just the other night but they, I, I think you know mesa is like we'd love to have something pencil out and work but we're not re- ready to roll out the red carpet and give them everything they want well and you look at downtown mesa too and you're like this place could be thriving and i, I it's not i don't know that it's necessarily that close to yeah. it but i feel like there's a, there's kind of a natural okay you invested in that yeah. If you put professional sports close by, that could I would right. think that could help. Well, I'm jealous when I go down to old downtown Mesa. Like I grew up in the East Valley. I'm like, where was this when I was younger? <laughs> you know, I used to play in a band. We used to play at the Nile, and you, that, you, there were no other bars downtown. There was nothing else downtown in in Mesa except antique stores. And now you go down there, there's breweries and restaurants. And I'm like, 
what's up with this? I feel robbed. Is the is the band? Is, have we gotten the band back together? When was the last no. reunion show? No, the band's not getting back together. It's not. Has there? There's been. What was the name of the band, by the way? Which one? <laughs> Uh, the, the the best the the one that everybody knows around here. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. So when I was a young man, it was a band called Sam the Butcher. It was a punk band um, named after, inspired by the Brady Bunch. Long story on that. We, Did you ever story. meet him, by the way? No, I never met him. Is he still uh, around? I don't know. Uh, See, that'd be a highly that would be likely. that would be yeah. kind of a great great moment. And then the the last band I did was, was post divorce. It's called The Revenge. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was, uh, uh, that was a lot of fun. Well, we need to pull the video. And we need it's to, a young we man's game. The, it's a young man's punk rocks for yeah. young men. It is. And women. It is. I should say. Yes. But there's, there's always time for a comeback. Yeah. So, um, in, in your heart of hearts, do you feel like the Coyotes are staying here in Arizona? I don't know. You know, I mean, they've, they're, they're a business. They're still in the business where I understand it's selling tickets. Right. And they said they're yeah. going to be here in the mullet arena for another year. Is this just a, a ploy to try to get people to buy season tickets? Cause they need, need still want to sell, sell out their, that, you know, the smaller arena. Is that part of a ploy? Where's the NHL on this? I, you know, am not plugged in on that kind of thing as you, you are. My sense is though, like, you know, there are people that would like to have them in their community here if they could make that deal work. I mean, you know, it's an it's a NHL, it's a professional franchise. Um, but, you know, clearly in Tempe, that wasn't that wasn't something that they wanted for a number, a host of reasons out there. But, you know, someone like Mesa, again, I, I think, you know, they'd like to see that if it could work. And we have to see the details on that. And and just, I think we already went over this, but I just want to ask again, because you, you study voting trends and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Similar voting trends in Mesa, is this going to be... You know, uphill. They're, are they got to change the way they message this this deal this time? They better change the way they message this um, because they should have learned a lot from Tempe. You know, um, I you know from a distance looking at that campaign. I mean, you know, my joke is uh, it looks like the Coyotes play politics about as well as they play hockey. Um, and for those who don't know, they haven't been the most successful team recently. Or a lot of the time the 2012 yeah, western yeah, conference yeah. finals i was there how yeah. can i forget about the 2012 western conference finals there was the whiteouts yes we're a whole white yeah, suit yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a picture so yeah. you know uh because i think at tempe they got they got tagged there's a very passionate dedicated grassroots campaign there um a low lo lower uh, voter turnout than a regular election cycle campaign that came out and i think they got tagged as being you know the quote unquote corrupt but billionaire they weren't able to overcome that, and, and I think voters generally now are a little bit suspect of of arenas if they involve public you know support in any way, and so the idea of giving a billionaire 20, 30 years of tax breaks on the back end, I think that just didn't sit well with Tempe voters who have you know a different attitude towards those things. Like I said, in Mesa, they are very tight-fisted with their tax dollars, but if you give them the reason and a good rationale for it, you know they will back something. Again, just like that spring training facility in Phoenix, but they need to figure out how to message that, and uh, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> well, you are getting texted uh, that they, I think they need you for the six o'clock show to discuss this more. On, on oh, they can yeah. wait. They okay. can wait. Right? They can. They can. <laughs> uh, get this man a raise, Dennis Welsh. I'll get his pay grade up there. Hey, thank this man. This is awesome. We always talk sports. Yep. It's been a while since we've talked. And we always uh, talk too about doing yeah. a podcast of uh, blending the two. Yes. 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 What do we call that, by the way? I don't know. Yes. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure Revenge? that out. We'll, we'll figure that Sam out when the you, butcher? when you get when we get you on the politics. Oh podcast, yes, I have lots. Which of will be launching lots. soon, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. When when can we find that? It'll be a few weeks. I'll okay. You know. The, okay. Uh, you know. You know. Um. Uh, I got a vacation coming up, and shortly after that. And then when can we see politics unplugged? That it airs on uh, on Sunday. Sundays at 5.30 in the five, morning and yeah. 5.30 in the afternoon. Awesome. And then We, we can, dominate the 5.30 space. There we go. It's so nice you can see it twice. <laughs> this would be great, man. That's awesome. Appreciate Thank the time. You. The Extra Point Podcast is a production of 3TV, CBS5, and azfamily.com in Phoenix, Arizona.